Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome back to the Spinner Rack, issue 34. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams. Joining me as always, co host of Comics Remix, Junior Ruiz. So this week, man, I wanted to discuss. This week, I'm not eating Taco Bell. I don't know if there was Taco Bell last week because I don't remember reporting last week. Um, so it doesn't matter. Was there Taco? No, no. You finished Tacos in issue 32. Three. I started in 32. Remember we did the first? Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. It's 32. Damn. Taco eating. Anyway, we're not here to talk about tacos. We're going to here to talk about what's wrong with comics. These rich bits. Now, the reason I bring this up is you see a lot on Facebook people complaining about just the different comics, you know. The storylines suck. The prices suck. They hate variant covers. It's, uh... There's a lot know, of shit. It's, it's all kinds of things. So I got a nice list that we're going to go through here, and it's... Probably going to jump around, but that's how we roll. The show. And uh, since, you know, there's been a lot of relaunches at Marvel recently, I thought... Did you uh, say racistly? It sounded like racistly. <laughs> I don't know, that, that Moon Knight looked a little racist. He looked like he could have been a clan's member. <laughs> but uh, do these reboots and relaunches bring in new readers? Does it actually help the company? And I mean... I think it's a yes and a no. You know, it's kind of a gray area. Mm -hmm. Here's what it was explained to me by someone in the industry who I, who shall remain nameless because he's a good friend of mine. And I don't want to put him out like that. I asked, why do companies constantly do relaunches? What's the you know what's the point? And he said, number ones always sell because that's when a new reader usually tends to jump in is when they find out a new number one is coming out. Problem. Think of it this way: This is the line. You know, you're you're at fifty percent with your steady sales. You launch number one, spikes up to seventy five percent. After issue two and three, drops right back down to that fifty percent. So it's just to kind of get those spikes every now and then as well. But is that? I mean, that's really not a viable way to. It's not a practical business. To model. them, it is. To, to, I guess. Not to the fans. I mean, I don't think they're. I don't th see our hobby as thriving. Uh, you don't see a lot of kids. I don't know a lot of kids that read comics. I mean, I know there's guys I know that have kids and their kids read comics. But I mean, you're getting it. You know, it's getting it panned down. There's not. I don't see this new reader base that this mythical, you know, thing that's going to come you know, in and I save gotta, I, I'm going to have to agree with you. There's uh, now I sit and think about. It, there's really not a lot of kids who come into the shop and pick up. Yeah, we, there there are some. I'm not going to say there's some. There's, I'm not saying there's none. But there's obviously a lot more adult readers that come in than kids. Then I guess also because well you can't really say that because how much does like an average gallon of gas cost now it's like four bucks yeah okay now that's just for a gallon of gas gallon of milk is like three four bucks you know depending where you go yeah three dollars probably under two eighty um all right we're not getting super uh, yeah yeah and we're not getting nail. nitpicky that's I thought that in my head the so. point is a kid's allowance mm -hmm. let's say it's still ten fifteen twenty bucks mm -hmm. dude they can't get shit that's like three bags of chips a week. Yeah, totally. So you think they're going to go with chips or they're going to go with a comic? Yeah, totally. I think also it's because, you know, these kids are not working, so they don't have the disposable income is the point that I'm trying to make. Right. So I guess that's why you don't see as many new readers in. You tend to get, like, readers that are in there, you know, they've already got a job and stuff. So the latest I've seen, or the earliest, most common I've seen, probably like 19, 20, you know? Yeah. See, I think that's where we were We were lucky as kids. Me, probably me, sort of a little more than you. I'm a few years older than you. So what were, what were comics, a dollar and a quarter, a dollar fifty? When I first got into them, they were a buck. Okay. They were 65, 75 cents when I first started reading them. So, you know, you could hit up your grandpa, your grandma, mm -hmm. like, hey, can I get three bucks? And you could ride your bike up to 7-Eleven, hit the spin a rack. Ah, I see what you did there. Spend three, you know, spend three bucks, get four comics. Now, there's not, there's not even really a comic on the shelf, maybe a couple. That you could get one with that three bucks. It's yeah. It's uh. Let's see. When I started, I was fortunate enough to actually start my collection from a neighbor. What's up, Ralphie? Who uh, used to sell me all his comics for a buck. So I didn't, you know, I was like, I didn't know how frequently they came out. I was just buying comics, so I always had something to read. To me, comics were a dollar, no matter what the cover price was. But when I started buying them in stores and you know, like Osco and Walgreens back when uh -huh. they still carried shit like that, dollar twenty-five. You know, because I I started buying them like heavily. On news racks when Maximum Carnage came out. Right on. Because I remember buying Spider Man Unlimited number one from him for like two bucks because it was the deluxe one. 
my mind was blown, and then that's when I found out that was one of the most current Spider-Man books out. So I went to the, this corner store. They had chapters two, three, four, and five. My mom's like, Chap- 14 chapters? I ain't buying you all that shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, you when you were a kid, you could go mow a lawn and someone would give you 10 bucks. And you had money for your comics and your chips. Now, it's like you said, it's a decision. You know, and since we're on talking of new readers, um, do you think that with them bringing more characters in from the movies, Marvel, obviously, because Warner Brothers, where are your movies? Yeah, station. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, they're trying to bring people that are into the movies into the comic book stores, picking up comic books or downloading them yeah. digitally, just getting them in. I was talking with somebody who also shall remain nameless. Um, think about it this way. The movies are a commercial for the comics. Absolutely. You go to the movie, you see the movie, where can I find more? I always go to the source, the comic books. That's true. That's, That's almost I, like I said they need to do comic book commercials on their movies. Mm-hmm. That could help too. But do you think that's or working? Or just though? go regular commercials and air them during the day for kids and then in prime time. Yeah, during, yeah what the hell? You know, have something random that Marvel well, you know, and all these other Okay, see. I think of, actually I just thought of a problem with that. And that is, most of these books that are out now are for, are for teens. I started reading comic books when, hell, I had a Red Rider wagon wait, 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 wait. of comics. When what do you mean child. today's comic books are for teens? Today's, well, they have the ratings on them now. Oh, okay, I see what you mean. But I, what I'm saying is the material is aimed towards an older audience yeah. than a kid that's sitting at home watching Avengers. Mm-hmm. So they need to... Probably my cousin Vinny. I mean, in that movie a lot. And Friday. Do they need to just create a different line just for children? I mean, I, and I know there are some. Mm-hmm. I don't know if Marvel actually does. Is Marvel doing issues again? Because yeah. I know they went to just a small digest. No, they're doing issues. They're doing um, issues? Spider-Man and then uh, Hulk and the Agents of Smash and uh, Avengers are my ace heroes. Which are just tied into probably shows that are on TV. Yep, the Disney XD yeah. or whatever. Is that it? Wait, Disney XD? Is this the one? Uh, whatever. I think whatever so. it is, the Disney cartoons. I, so. I mean, do you really want your kids reading Batman or Green Lantern or Superman or, or Wolverine or Deadpool? We read them. Like 10? Yeah, but I don't remember. I feel like comics were a little, but then I guess I really can't say that because, I mean, Frank Miller did write you Dark Knight when I was like There's 11. a bit more, it's a bit more sexualized nowadays, mm-hmm. and there's a lot more innuendo mm-hmm. in the writing than it was back then. Like, the sexiest it got back then when I was reading was like Peter and Mary Jane fighting over Mary Jane smoke habits, mm-hmm. but while they're fighting, Mary Jane is sitting there like in a black lingerie outfit because she's getting ready for bed. Like that was like the most it ever got. Right. Push, you know. But well, now it's like hyper sexualized. You know, all crazy. like they're on the cover banging and stuff. You know, <laughs> there's comic books that sell called with the word sex in the title. Okay, so I guess I'm just like, yeah, I know, I know. So Which actually, Sex Criminals is a very good book. Is it? Yeah. I heard, I, it is really it? has, like, it has to do with sex, but not for sex sake. Does that make sense? Quick rundown, dude. Basically, there's this girl who came from a really troubled background. Her dad was gone, her mom's alcoholic, just picked down in school the whole nine yards. So one day, like I said, she's a teenager, only like 13, 14. She's in the bathroom, she's in the bath. And her mom's like, she hears her fighting. And so she's just kind of laying in the bathtub with the water running. Water starts to stimulate her. She busts one. All of a sudden, time stops. Like, time is completely frozen, except for her. So she's able to walk around, you know, everybody's, like, frozen. After a while, she realized she can stop time every time she orgasms. And she was like, she thought she was a freak, though. She's like, I'm a freak of nature. Why is this happening to me? Blah, blah, blah. So as an adult, there's a library that the bank is trying to close on. He's like, this is my library. This is my life. You know, I love books, blah, blah, blah. They're having a fundraiser. She meets a guy. Her and guy hit it off, and they go in the back. And they hit it off. She orgasms. She freezes time. Time freezes. (laughs) Except, he's like, wow, I thought I was the only one. And she's like, oh, my God, you know? So they figured, wow, there's somebody else like me after all these years. Is this even normal? What do you know about this compared to what do I know? Let's share notes. So he comes up with the crazy idea. He's like, why don't we stop time and rob a bank to get the money you need to save your library? And she's like, yeah, that might work. They're in the alley real quick. They bang. They go in. And see, and when I say they bang, it's nothing like the panels aren't perverted. It's usually all the parts are covered up. It's just kind of like them hugging, but naked. Right, right. You know, so you go into the bank, they get the money, they come out, and there's three cops waiting on them. One uh, lady dressed in white, and then two guys, and they're moving. It's like the, the, like the, the insane sound, the people in white. So it turns out now that I guess, because they're only four ish, four or five issues deep. Uh-huh. 
there's uh there's a lot that still has yet to be explained. So now it's apparent that this is something else. So interesting. And then like I said, when she um hers is like timed when she orgasms, time only stays still or for a few minutes. <laughs> Whereas he when he does it, time is frozen until he's aroused again. Wow. Mm-hmm. So it's that, actually a very good book. Something for everyone to think about sex criminals. Mm-hmm. Image comics, sex criminals written by Matt Fraction. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this back to our original <laughs> Oh yeah. Our original piece. <laughs> So, okay, do you believe mainstream comics are appropriate for kids today? I'm talking 9, 10 years old, younger kids. Mainstream what company? Marvel and DC and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah, well, because obviously there's not really a whole lot in the independent world for kids unless it's, you know... Um, speaking for I today... I mean, there's some. Speaking for today, yeah. I'd say most Marvel and DCs are appropriate mm-hmm. because you got to remember, kids nowadays are growing up a lot quicker and they've got more... Ser- there's more stuff on TV that they're exposed to, more stuff on the radio, of course, the internet, you know, so they see stuff a lot sooner than me or you should have seen them. Uh-huh. You know, but what to them, I guess, like I said, they're growing faster. What, they see teach, like, sex ed in, what, fifth grade or something? Yeah, that's crazy. So, do I think they're appropriate? Yeah, for the most part, because, you know, Marvel and DC will never have a nip slip. There's never really any profanity besides Dan. It's not not WWE. Yeah. Okay. So, I think, yeah, they're appropriate. It's, like I said earlier, more innuendo than anything. Right, right. I I would definitely not recommend... uh, Except for Ultraman, sorry, (laughs) Chris. Oh, (laughs) yeah, 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 I forgot about that one. That's not quite appropriate for kids. But well, so that's why they got the rating so most of plus. It, yeah, most of it's good. Okay, but can they get new readers? I think they have to change things, you know? I think uh, one of the things I actually at first thought was... I actually, I still have a problem with this particular situation. It's the casting of the Human Torch in the new Fantastic Four. This is now, it. I have heard... Yeah, well, no. This, I'm not going to talk about them casting how it's wrong. I've already We've already walked down that road. My point is here is uh, does changing a character's race possibly open the door to other people who wouldn't have normally went and seen the Fantastic Four, for example, go see it? Maybe, you just never know. Like, if Superman was Puerto Rican, would that make you more inclined to go see Superman Me if you were not already a comic no. fan? Okay, yeah, I can tell you, speaking on uh, a lot of the, the old school ways, um, yeah, because I could tell you my dad would be more interested to go see it. My dad's old school, you know? Like, country Puerto Rican, so he'd be like, wow, this is my Puerto Rican, yeah, you know, he's there. So, I, I think, yeah, it'd be interesting. You might lose, I mean, you get more of that race to go see it, because obviously it's their race. Right. But you lose a lot of other races, especially those who are not open minded. Well, because I had I had read an article after the the announcing of the casting for the new FF, which now I'm hearing is not happening or isn't happening. I don't know what's up with that movie. Yeah. But anyway, it's supposed to get like recast that, and rewritten. Yeah, that they had said, oh, we did this because you know now other people that normally wouldn't go see it might go see it. Almost saying that like we're gonna get the black, black guys, the black superhero community. We're gonna get them to come see this movie, and then maybe they'll go to college. And it's just like did I don't you say the black superhero. I, I, yeah, I meant like I fans. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I got too rushed. I need to just slow down a little bit. All right. But the uh, they're just trying to go after that community. They're like, hey, but I think that is that good or bad? I personally bad. think it's kind of like terrible. It is. It's, it's I mean, terrible. Samuel L. Jackson is Nick Fury. That worked. It's more of a natural thing. I mean, he was that way. They designed Ultimate Nick Fury after Sam Jackson, so it works. Yeah. Um, so that was like a gradual change. It's, well, you knew it was coming anyway. You know, I mean, not a they, change per se, but you knew. Okay, he's black in the comics now, so if he's black on the screen, it's not going to hurt. If he's white on the screen, it's not going to hurt. No, what do you think? Do you... Let, speaking of Nick Fury really quick. Okay, so you basically have two different characters with the exact same name. In the Marvel Universe? In the Marvel, yeah. and... Well, you get the regular Nick Fury in the Marvel Universe. Not that bastard kid of his. Okay. Uh, and then you got Sam Jackson Nick Fury. In Ultimates? Yeah. yeah. It, do you see what I mean, though? They're like two completely different characters, mm-hmm. just with the same name. Like, mm-hmm. obviously, same look, or different look and everything. Right. But when you look at, like, how much more of a badass the 616 one was, like, he was a Vietnam guy, obviously times. Right, stuff, totally. Like, he was more rough, like, uh, war, war-hardened, war where it seems like this, uh, the Sam Jackson one, was like, he's seen his time, but he was more like, I'm just kind of like, I was trained for this, I wasn't born for it or bred for it, kind of like... Am I making sense? I don't yeah. sound like I'm, you know... It, it, no, like I, I kind of hear what you're saying. It's two different things. So, you know, like I said, either way, one won't overshadow the other. You know, like, oh, they should have did this one, they should have did that one. It fit with the, with the story they were trying to tell. The I feel like it's more... I feel like... The 616 Fury is more like you said. He's like that old school war hero, you know? He was fought in Nam and fought probably World War II. Was he a World War II character? Or no? No. No, no totally not. No. What am I thinking? He was 60s. So that was Nam. 
So, I mean, he had fought in the war. Like you said, he was, like, more battle-hardened. I feel like the ultimate U universe, Nick Fury, not that he's not a badass, but it's more like espionage and black ops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I was trying to get out. Thank you. You explained it a lot faster than I did, too. What do you think about the the bastard son of Nick Fury that's not called Nick Fury and Agent Coulson? Back to that whole making movie characters into comic characters. Is that going to bring in readers? I don't think so. It'll, yeah, I, I think it would. Just nowhere near the amount that they like. Yeah. Out of like 50 people, you might have three that decide to want to check it out, you know? And then like changing the sexuality of characters, is that... That I don't understand. I can understand changing the, changing the nationalities, because it's easier to do that than change a character's sexuality. Uh-huh. I don't understand that. I really don't. Unless it's a character like Loki. Because he's yeah, a Yeah, I get that. I, I, dug, I dug the chick Loki. What was, yeah. was she just Loki, or yeah. was she like just Loki? just Loki. And I dug kid Loki. Uh, unfortunately, that new Loki that's out now, uh, Agent of Asgard, yeah. I, I don't like him. Have you read that one? I have. I've read the first two issues. Uh, oh, first of all, I think there was a real spoiler. I, I believe there was a reveal at the end of the first issue that he's not the real Loki. Oh, okay. Like, because they, they showed the classic Loki, who we haven't seen in a long time. When was the last time you've seen classic Loki? You mean like adult, yeah. male, classic, what the fuck? Yeah. Ages ago. Yeah. Um, Bull. No, actually, no. Right before he was turned into Kid Loki. Yeah? Yeah, so that was what, like, early to mid-2000s. I thought he was a woman, and then turned into Kid Loki. Well, whatever. Before he was transformed. What was that? Like, wasn't it uh, Ragnarok? Or was that before that? I don't remember. That was around the time New Avengers launched. So it was, Aven- it was Thor disassembled then? Yeah, the Thor disassembled. So I think that's the last time. It might have been even before that. Well, he, he appeared in the back of it, but... Nah, it's kind of... So now you got to explain this to me. How, how did he appear, like, or why did he appear? And... Uh, I read so much, and it, read it. it's not really awesome. I don't retain it. Oh, right. I really didn't think it was awesome, but I did think it was like, oh, he's just... It seems like maybe he's created this new Loki and is maybe trying to infiltrate okay. into the, like uh, the All-Mother's camp. But I don't know. It's kind of unclear, really. I'll read it. It wasn't all that great. I forgot what we were talking about now. There at the screen. Oh, changing the character sexuality. Diversity in comics. These things, I don't think at reboots, relaunches, uh, changing the race of characters, changing the sexuality of characters, none of this is going to bring in new fans. Mm -hmm. I feel like, if anything, it's going to alienate a lot of people. It'll alienate more than they bring in. But here's the thing. You don't know unless you try. Oh, yeah. No, th- this is true. But I feel like if anything that the DC New 52 has proved is that we, the people... <laughs> <laughs> That's for you, John. Would prefer our DCU act. I know I would. Yeah. You know what it is? I think we've also been given and fed so many events mm-hmm. that... The new 52, and still, in my opinion, going on three years now, feels like an event and not something that's actually happened. You know what I mean? Well, the problem is, is the one thing I really loved about it before, and I don't think they should have changed, is that there was a history. There was a sense of history. And that history, not all of it made sense, but damn it if Jeff Johns, in the last, you know, from like the early 2000s, when he redid uh, Green Lantern, and he just started building the, you know... He took all that history and, like, made it cohesively work Mm -hmm. and things, things like Identity Crisis. He wasn't lazy. Yeah, totally not. He, like, made it all gel together. And even the stupid, silly aspects of it, then he, like, made you appreciate things from the Silver Age. And then to dump all that and do this relaunch and then try and say, like, and not do, like, a hard relaunch, like... If they were going to do it, man, they needed to fucking do it. Fuck what's going on in Batman. Fuck all this shit, because now you fucked it up. Yeah. Batman's only been around, what, six years? Yep. In current continuity, and he's had four Robins. I'm sorry, three Robins. No. Yeah, three Robins and a Red three, Robin. Three Robins and a Red Robin. Yum. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's hard to fucking believe, man, that all that happened. And Superman... I don't think they, they, uh, they thought it out as well. See, now, I wanted to mention this as well. They're, now that we're playing on it, the continuity issues. Oh yeah. my god, the continuity issues at DC are terrible. Now here's one thing that really got my balls chafing here. <laughs> forever Evil. What was the point of, or the Trinity War? What was the point of the Trinity War? To set up Forever Evil. Okay, but what happened at the end of Trinity War? They released the... Uh, to our heroes. The Justice League. What happened to our heroes? They lost. They all died, supposedly. They remember? died. Supposedly. Everybody's missing. The only one that didn't go was Batman. Well, yeah, come on. But okay, so this is the thing. All right, make your point. If this then... is all in continuity, why is Batman the only one there? All the other heroes are missing. Yes, Superman's appearing in his books. Batman's still appearing in, like, three other Batman titles, not including the Zero Year stuff. You know, 
Aquaman's still appearing in his book. You got everybody else who's a Wonder Woman still in her book. So if this is all in continuity, when does all that take place then compared to this storyline? Because they've been gone for a while in Forever Evil. So you would think that that would resonate throughout the rest of the titles, right? I think in some titles, if I'm not mistaken, and I could be, that they are saying, oh, this is six months. Like, I believe when the new Aquaman started up with Parker, okay, I believe that it said six months after Forever Evil. Okay. Because Aquaman wasn't even was he really being, was he in Trinity War? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I believe it's like all the Justice Leagues were. I believe they pulled it back for for a few months to, and then obviously Batman's in zero. I, yeah, I don't know. That fucking continuity is a hot mess, dude. I don't like it. I mean, that was the thing I liked about the old DCU is the continuity was always pretty tight. Yeah. Like, if things were going on and a dude popped up in another book, they would, like, you know, there would be I nods loved, to what were going on in the other one books. One thing I loved about DC in the 90s into the 2000s, but I noticed it more in the Superman books than in the Batman books, but they did do it. The upside-down triangle uh-huh. that they put on the cover with the year and a number in it, uh-huh. by the issue, so it'd be, like, 1993, 34. You know, and it was going across all the Superman books, so that was the order you were supposed to read the books. Yeah. You know, for continuity-wise. I was like, that is awesome. Yeah, totally. Because you knew exactly what book, when, or what book to read that's the funny thing if you go into my well I, I've changed it now since I reorganized my, my comics I took all my Batman comic books and at the time like I wasn't really buying any other Batman books but Batman and Detective yeah. and when those crossovers would happen like Bruce Wayne murder you mm-hmm. know or any of that stuff and it would cross over into other books I would buy those other books and I would just stick them right in with right. the Batman books. Where they're supposed to be. Because like to me, dream. even though, you know, it was Batman issue, you know, 634, and then 635 was part 6. Yeah. I'd have those fucking those oh, right, five right, right. issues in the Yeah, and especially if you're not collecting them, then yeah, story yeah. there, why not? That's storyline purpose. It's like, fuck it, that's, that's why they're there. Mm-hmm. And then you didn't buy any afterwards. Sometimes you did, but usually not. Right. That shit kind of pissed me off, though, sometimes, because I always felt like <laughs> those whole Batman storylines, when they would cross over into Batgirl or Robin, it would just be like a different story completely than what was going on with Batman. Yeah. But anyway, I, I don't think any of this crap is going to bring in more readers. If they want diversity in comic books, then create more diverse characters. Yeah. I will defend Alan Scott of Earth 2, though, because Earth 2, in my opinion... You've got to look at it this way. It's a, it's a whole new fucking ball game. Mm-hmm. It was the one fucking thing that DC Universe, they did right with this new 52. Yeah. Was they just said, okay, all fucking bets are off. We're just going to do something you've never fucking seen before. And they're going to be completely different. This is how DC, like, you can tell they have no balls, man. No. Remember when the Marvel started uh, Ultimate Universe? Yeah. That was like a whole different thing, mm-hmm. which is still around. DC tried it, remember? The All-Star yeah, well, the All Star failed though because it, it wasn't. Failed horribly. They weren't building a cohesive universe. No, they were just like we're just going to take these characters and going to tell awesome fucking tales with awesome creators that just are not awesome. May or may I, not. I, yeah, you actually were. read them. No, Batman painting himself yellow to beat Green Lantern. Yeah, fucking Jesus, Frank Miller. But that's where we got the famous phrase: "I'm the goddamn, I'm the Batman. goddamn Batman." Yeah, that became famous, huh? That was it. I actually managed to get the last issue of Batman and Robin number ten. All Star Batman and Robin, where uh, they had to recall it because yeah. the black. Bars. Yeah, I got that. I've got that too. I was like, I paid like five bucks off of eBay. You turned out, you know who the seller ended up being? The place I work at. I was nice. like, oh, no way. <laughs> so, you know, we're going to continue this conversation uh, into next the episode. next issue. Next issue. <laughs> Oops. Because obviously we had a lot of bitch about when it comes to just them changing the color, sex, whatever. That it seemed shit like this work. was more like, well, we don't like what DC is doing. Yeah, it, yeah, this was a total DC bash. But you know what? Why? They're standing out. This is true. Not that we favor Marvel over DC. No, DC I definitely do not. I will say right now, I do not favor Marvel over DC. See, I grew up Marvel. I, I was, I was I'm both a hardcore dude, Marvel guy. I'm Batman and Spider-Man dude all the way. Those oh, are yeah. my favorite characters oh, yeah. in my heart. Boom. Comic book wise, I didn't get into DC until like around the time of Death of Superman. My first comic only because book. that's when it was really thrown at me. My first you know? comic book was Batman. Yeah, when I was like four or five and seventy, it was an issue from I think seventy nine. Okay, but then I had a wagon full of like Spider Man, all kinds of fucking shit. It's good stuff. Gotta love your comics. So yeah, I guess we're gonna continue our gripes with the industry into issue thirty thirty five. Three five, we're getting up there. As always, for everything we do, check it out at comicsremix.com. Everything is there. The spinner rack, comics remix. Everything. We got the lockup, the new Collectors wrestling podcast, Corner. Collectors Corner, all kinds of good stuff. Tweets and Facebook and all that good stuff. Comicsremix.com, the only place you need to go. That's right. For your comic talk. See you next week. Mm-hmm.